So this uh, QNAP TS453 Mini NAS arrived and I thought, goodness me, it's been a long time since I last saw a QNAP NAS. I thought, in fact, how long has it been? I realised at least five years, possibly as many as 10 years. My impression of QNAP, apart from the fact it's one of the big brands of NAS on the market, uh, is solid, reliable, and beyond that, I thought, I actually haven't got a clue. It's been that long since I've had anything to do with them. Uh, so this is a welcome uh, thing to come along because it makes me sort of reevaluate what I know about the market. So TS453 Mini, it's a small NAS, four bay, despite the fact when you first look at it, you might think it's only two bay, because it is small. Um, you pop off this top cover, and inside you've got four drive caddies. Undo the latch, pull them out, bung in a drive, put them back. Totally tool free, unless you're using a two and a half inch drives, in which case you need to secure them. Uh, other than that, bang, 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 in they go. I found that the latches were a little stiff uh, at first. Uh, the drives didn't necessarily engage first time. I suspect it's purely because it's new. And then the cover drops on, and these four magnets hold it in place with a slightly uh, scary snap. Uh, it's a very shiny casing that arrives covered in sort of protective plastic to hold in place with static. It's an absolute fingerprint magnet. Um, probably you can see various marks all over it. It's, it's not been abused in the slightest. I can see various marks on the side here. Uh, and I suspect it'll scratch like crazy. Uh, but that's pure speculation on my part. So, on the other hand, of course, a NAS, realistically, it should be parked up, shouldn't it, in the corner of an office out of harm's way, so it'll just gather dust. Uh, you've got, at the front, in that slit below this top cover, you've got a sort of a, a, an LED stripe, which in this instance is blue to show that the NAS is awake. It also changes colour when it goes to sleep. You've got a whole bunch of LEDs there for the status of the hard drives, which are four brand new, shiny Western Digital Red 4 terabyte drives. Uh, absolutely brand new, it's the first time they've been, they've been in use in this NAS. Uh, you've then got uh, other LEDs to do with the status of the drive array, or drive arrays, depending on how you organise them. Down here you've got one USB 3 port, you've got uh, power and reset buttons, and then around the back we have got a couple of USB 2 power jack for that power brick there, two Ethernet, two USB 3, one HDMI output. The HDMI output in this instance is an absolute godsend because it means I can plug directly into this monitor uh, because the whole fun and games of showing off NAS ordinarily is of course you have to do it across a network which is all fine, it just means you have a whole load of hardware to try and actually show what on earth's going on. Uh, HDMI uh, means you can just go directly to this. Now the processor powering this NAS is an Intel Celeron J1900 quad core. It's got eight gigabytes of DDR3L memory, uh, which actually bumps up the price significantly. A two gigabyte version retails for about 368 pounds at uh, Amazon, 350 at Scan. The four, uh, the eight gigabyte version is more expensive. It's another 100 pounds, basically 466 at Amazon. Um, uh, and the thing is, I mean, we always know you pay a fortune for memory when you buy them from a NAS provider or, or indeed some like HP for one of their printers uh, because they have to qualify the memory and they can charge you a fortune for guaranteeing it's going to work nicely with the device. Uh, in this instance, £100 for a, well, an 8 gigabyte kit, two modules. Uh, it looks to me like regular laptop memory. I'm quite sure if you could find an appropriate memory at the likes of Crucial, it would cost you 45 quid or so. But... If you're going down the 8 gig route, then that's it's going to cost you an arm and a leg from QNAP. The thing is that I would have been just as happy had it come with 2 gigabytes, because for a relatively, uh, not low end, that's incorrect, but for a NAS that's intended for not many users, 2 gig of memory is generally adequate. 1 gig can often be enough. 8 gig is heaps. I suspect it's because it's a reviewer's special. They've sent me the all singing, all dancing, because uh, without a shadow of a doubt, 8 gig of memory means there's going to be no bottleneck whatsoever. Uh, so... It's nice to see, but on the other hand, if it was my own personal cache, I'd be going for less. Uh, replacing memory is easy. There's photographs on the Kit Guru webpage. You go to the bottom of the system. There's a single screw. Hatch comes off. There are two uh, modules of memory. Snap, snap, job done. The um, 
the, the layout is actually also shows that the bottom, the, the motherboard lies horizontally. Uh, there's a 120mm cooling fan for the system. You've got the processor and such like on the motherboard along with that memory. And then 1234, 1234 uh, SATA connections for the four drives. And that's your lock plus a whole bunch of uh, you know, LEDs. And then obviously it means that the ports at the front and the back are on either end of the motherboard. The configuration layout makes perfect sense. Uh, it does, of course, also mean that this is a computer. Um, it's running obviously on uh, QNAP's uh, Linux software, but it is a, I was about to say PC, but it is a computer. Uh, and a perfectly reasonable little computer at that. Um, now, it occurred to me, uh, when you open this system up, you, you get a welcome to QTS uh, thing pops up on the screen, which I shut down simply because uh, I found it to be something of, a, of an annoyance. Um, just close that down to show you the desktop. And uh, it actually raised the question in my mind, what is QTS? Now, the thing is, if you go off to uh, uh, QNAP's website, uh, which is actually surprisingly slow loading, um, perhaps I was just having a bad day, but um, there is actually a web page called uh, titled What is QTS? And it tells you all about their QTS software. What it doesn't actually tell you is what does QTS stand for? And the answer is it stands for QNAP Turbo NAS System, or put it another way, QNAP's uh, NAS software, which raised a further question in mind. What on earth does QNAP actually stand for? QNAP? Because I suddenly realized I had no idea. And it stands for Quality Network Appliance Provider, which I suppose is a bit like Big Oil Company or something like that, isn't it? Steel Pipe Company, Cincinnati. So QTS is QNAP Turbo NAS System. Essentially, it is Quality Network Appliance Provider Turbo NAS System, uh, which is an awful lot of words to say, not very much, um, except they have some confidence in their software. But this is QTS. Now, this isn't exactly how you see QTS if you connect across the network, but it is very, very similar indeed. This uh, connected directly over HDMI to get this uh, set up like this, it works well. When you first connect over HDMI, the system uh, boots up, uh, it's obviously with mouse and keyboard attached, uh, one USB dongle to drive this little uh, combined uh, unit here, uh, and then the HDMI for the display, and it installs hybrid disk station, uh, which is that software package there, and also Chrome, uh, Chrome browser. And there we go, that's hybrid disk station, which is basically a control panel and all manner of other things, and you can install various bits of software and such like, and it's all fine and dandy, um, and works well. The business of installing Chrome is significant in that when you upload files, um, I'm just checking my note there to make sure I say exactly the right thing. When you upload uh, an individual file, say a movie to the NAS, you just go mark it on the network, upload it, and it does it. When you want to upload a folder of files, and to my mind that's actually what you do, particularly when you're populating a NAS in the first place, you go along and you say, this to there, thank you very much, and you want to do click, click, and let it get on with it. Um, you can only do uploading of folder files if you use Google Chrome. Uh, I prefer to use Firefox, obviously there are some people who use Internet Explorer, clearly Safari for Mac types. Uh, Chrome, as we know, is popular, no two ways about it. But if you mark a bunch of files or a folder, it simply says, no. Not unless you're using Chrome, it won't, won't have any of it. Apparently, according to QNAP, this is to do with the internal structure, the inter internal workings of uh, browsers, and Chrome works for them and the rest don't. Now, I, I'm not keen on that. I don't like being told what I should and should not use. Uh, Firefox works for me. We all know that different browsers have different problems. Um, and let's face it, most problems come down to blooming Flash. But um, the idea that I can't just use the browser of my choice, I, I don't like that. Um, I'm hoping that's a temporary thing. I'm hoping it'll be fixed. Uh, on the other hand, that was pretty much the only actual uh, bug, glitch, or annoyance I found with this NAS. So I won't beat on it too hard. Um, QTS, so Linux-based, uh, as you'd expect. It has that whole Apple iOS thing where it all looks kind of flashish and pastelish colors, and you've got your standard... Uh, uh, little lights and such like to you know expand the window can uh, reduce the window and shut the window just as you'd expect it's all entirely intuitive uh, one funny thing is that QNAP calls its packages stations I'm not entirely clear why but that's their terminology so photo station music station video station yada 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 
backup station. Uh, the basic software that you get, in other words, does everything that you need. Um, there are various references down here, for example, to QNAP mobile app, so you can do the whole connect across the internet using your phone or your tablet or whatever, um, which personally, I'm not much interested in. I know that there are instances where you're the other side of the world or on holiday or some such, and you absolutely got to have access to your magic file that's on your NAS at home, otherwise your life has no meaning. I mean, we hear about business scenarios like this. Your colleague is doing a vital presentation, needs access to a thing, you've got it at home, you go to it yourself, you create a link, you email them the link, they go into your system, the world is saved. I struggle to see this. I've heard it from other vendors. I'm not talking about QNAP, but another storage vendor. And I struggle to see it because as far as I'm concerned, if it's a vital work file, I'm not sure it should actually be on your home machine. If it's a small business and your NAS is at home, then as far as I'm concerned, your colleague should already have access. Uh, if it's if it's your personal stuff and you're basically holding you need vital access to homeland to watch it because you're bored well your holiday's not very good that's what i'm saying so that mobile app thing i kind of get i'm not not really won over by it similarly the remote control that qnap sent which is um looks like metal looks like element it's actually sort of a bit plasticky but does a perfectly good job so you can navigate your movies and so when you're lounging back and you can navigate your what's in again i understand that some people will do that um I personally do not. For me, a NAS is a thing on the end of a network cable. It's parked in the corner. If I'm serving files to, you know, to whichever, um, my Western Digital TV unit or some such, or my smart TV or another PC or a laptop and navigating to it, I want to play it. I, I can navigate with, you know, you, for example, that touchpad there works absolutely perfectly. I don't need a special dedicated remote, but I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I'm never going to use this remote, but fair enough, it's included in the deal. That's okay. Um, the business actually, it's worth describing actually, the fact that the desktop looked right, albeit on this slightly cruddy old display, is significant. Intel Celeron processor, Intel HD graphics, and we're talking old and crusty Intel HD graphics. When you first fire it up, the scaling is wrong because it's HDMI and HDMI graphics are horrible. Uh, however, you can go in the control panel, look for um, a display, and you can go on the scaling, drag a slider, and it's sorted in moments. I, as I mentioned, I have not seen QTS software. I don't even know if it was called QTS back the last time I saw it. Uh, I haven't seen it in a living age. I had no idea how to fix scaling and things. Control panel, display, bang, 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 job done in a matter of moments, and the display to scale correctly. Uh, this is significant because obviously if it's not scaled, these things disappear off the top and it becomes a, a nightmare navigating. Um, now, the reason I mention this, apart from the fact that HDMI output fills me with fear, and this works well, is when a storage manufacturer is able to sort out graphics drivers and graphics scaling uh, without any hassle at all, that fills me with confidence and it gives me a happy, warm feeling. Uh, because it's the sort of thing that certain PC manufacturers seem to struggle with. Intel seems to struggle with, struggle with it with their own drivers. This QNAP Linux system, no problem at all. It didn't do it automatically. I had to do it manually, but it was just as good as it gets. And um, I've come across systems where you cannot scale the output correctly. So QNAP, good work. I'm happy. Now, why would you want an HDMI output from your NAS to a screen? The short answer is I personally would not. I can understand that you might want to be configuring a system, you might want to just plug it into a monitor to avoid the hassle of going across a network. This happens. Sometimes you have problems with the network, you want to plug in directly to confirm that the NAS and the storage are behaving themselves. That's fine. Um, that's a kind of get out of jail card. There's no problem with that. But the thing is that I, I asked, uh, uh, and I said HDMI, fair enough, but do we really need it? And the response came back, I'll read it. Uh, for example, maybe you want to run a piece of software 24-7 in your environment that is Windows only. Remember, this is Linux. But you don't want to get, dedicate a server to it. You can run a Windows virtual machine in the NAS and use it that way. For this particular NAS, perhaps you want to create you know, a virtual PC for a child so they can learn how to use a computer. If they hit a problem, you can pop the uh, virtual machine. And uh, as it's snapshot, you can rewind. 
I, I was amazed. I have to be honest. I was absolutely stunned. The, the logic of virtual machines, yes, this is completely true. If you're in a business environment and you've got multiple desktops and such, like you can use virtual machines so that your, uh, your hordes of workers, you just simply re-image them every night and it just easy peasy. Because after all, everything is going to be on your servers and it's going to be online and such like. The actual desktop machine, the client machine can be as virtual machine. Why not? The idea you might have your NAS potentially at home. I mean, after all, the, the thing of giving a virtual machine to a child clearly doesn't apply to an office machine. So this is using the TS-453 Mini at home. Uh, the idea of having a virtual machine for your kid, uh, they can have a play around with some stuff and you're just going to pop the, pop the bubble and they can you know, go back to their little sandbox. Well, okay, new one on me. Um, it makes sense logically. I can well imagine some people might do it. I personally would not. Uh, but the idea of virtual machine on your NAS as a Windows box, to, well, okay. I can see that developers might enjoy that. Um, the idea you can do it on NAS, that, that, that really is like a take, a take a long, hard look at the thing. Well, it's a brave new world for sure. The thing is that they're basically giving you that for free. That aspect of it, I personally am not interested in. Some people will be. The remote, I don't want. Some people will. Um, the idea that you can simply park this in the corner, forget those aspects of it, which is what I would do, uh, that makes perfect sense to me. I would be interested in backup station, possibly video station, possibly photo station, possibly uh, music station and control panel of the settings and that would be my lot because to me that's what a NAS is. It's a box which used to be an ugly box, this is a rather pretty box that sits there serving files all day and all night long just as long as you want for years and in that respect uh, the TS-453 Mini does exactly what I want. The fact it does all these other things that I do not want, that's no problem to me whatsoever. They certainly were not in my face throughout this. This business about arranging all the software in these stations so that you can uh, take what you like from the list and you can take all these various services. I mean, all this stuff down here, all these privilege settings, users, user groups, shared folders, quota, domain, security, and all the rest of it, FTP. I haven't used FTP in, I cannot remember how long. Um, I thank Dropbox, obviously, for that. But uh, Telnet, I mean, really? Uh, and so on and so on and so on. I don't need any of that. But there will be people that will want those. And the fact they're there and I can ignore them and you can play them if you like, good luck to you. Um, now, this for me is the difference between uh, Synology's Linux and QNAP's Linux and Windows Server, which we saw on Athecus NAS where Windows, it keeps throwing the stuff at you because that's what the whole thing is about, is all this stuff. Um, these Linux packages where they go, yeah, there's all this stuff, you can ignore it. I'll go, I, I shall, thank you very much. I just want some great big buttons on the desktop to do what I want and works brilliantly, happy. Um, performance, performance, the TS-453 Mini, it's good. It's not epic, but it is certainly good and it's absolutely good enough, which is the main thing. The Celeron processor is snappy enough. The 8GB memory obviously helped. The gigabit Ethernet did the job. Uh, generally speaking, when I was transferring files, um, when you transfer multiple files, it zips them together. To, it does it all inside the machine. It doesn't, it doesn't ask. It just does it. And it works perfectly well. The responsiveness, the latency, happy. Um, generally, the biggest delay is when the drive's waking up, you navigate to where you want to go, and you're marking the files you want to move one way or the other, and you're going, go. Uh, that takes far more time than the actual process of it starting to move because once it starts to move, you can just leave it alone. If you want to stream a movie, you click that movie, go, it just does uh, almost instantly. Um, uh, certainly, you know, once the fact it might be chunked away in the background while you're watching a Blu ray is a complete irrelevance. So that's fine. Um, the USB 3 connection and such like that, that when you plug a drive in it, uh, it appears as an external thing and you can move stuff around. You can copy from the USB 3 internally. You can send that. That's all absolutely fine. Everything works as you would expect, which is actually when it comes to storage, what I want. I don't want the complicated stuff. I just want it just to, just to do what I want. Um, the setup is... A delight. It's basically a series of clicking next, 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 next. You, you, you use a sticker off the side of the machine that says, identifies the NAS. You find it on the network. It, obviously, it requires an internet connection. Downloads the latest software, the latest QTS software, installs it. The only question you need to go over is 
uh, drive configuration and it offers you RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, 10 and JBOD. Now with a four drive setup, obviously you don't necessarily have four drives in a four drive NAS, but makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, if you're striping them, you're a lunatic. If you're using JBOD, I don't quite get that. Drive RAID 6, that means you've got a spare parity drive on standby just in case. So essentially you're losing a drive, you're really losing two drives. Uh, I don't quite get that either. I would have said that mirroring was entirely adequate. Possibly RAID 10 where you've got uh, drives working like that. Maybe split it into two pairs, mirror one to the other. That, that would work as well. Um, they are big on, I think the term is drive pools. Storage pools, storage pools. Flexible volume management and storage pools. Well, it's true. Um, it's jargon. But essentially what they're all about is, and in fairness here, Synology is the same, is you stick some drives in, it looks and it goes, yep, okay, I'll deal with those. Uh, and unless you're desperate to get every single last gigabyte out of every single last drive that you have, if you're just going to let it sort itself out, it will do the job nicely. Creates an array or arrays, uh, verifies them, software goes on, it just gets on and works in the background. It's absolutely fine. Pull a drive out, plug a drive back in, it, it doesn't get confused, it doesn't get upset. I am going to say it though, I use Western Digital Reds in this, they're the four, gig, uh, four terabyte models. Uh, strongly recommend you use a dedicated NAS drive in your NAS because that way if the drive goes to um, sleep the NAS doesn't get too upset because it knows the drive is going to come back whereas a desktop drive goes to sleep for a long time before it wakes up and the NAS can think the drive is actually broken. Uh, it's a small difference, but a significant difference. And I had no problems whatever with the Western Digital Reds. Not that I expect to have any problems, but in conjunction with this uh, QNAP NAS, absolutely perfect performance in the sense of I had no problems. And that's what I want from a NAS, no problems. So QNAP TS453 Mini, it offers me features that I don't want or don't need, and I can ignore such as this remote, and that's fine by me. I'm happy. It offers me the features I do want. Those features work well. I'm not particularly happy that I have to use Chrome to upload folders of files. That strikes me as wrong, and I'm trusting they'll fix that just as soon as possible. When it comes to creating a QNAP account with a verified email address and uh, name and the option of a mobile phone number, well, I'm not going to do that. Um, I understand it could help me verify that I'm legitimately allowed to access my stuff, but this is the sort of thing that's going a little too far for my taste, so we'll ignore that. Uh, I have a question mark over the fact it comes with eight gigabytes of memory, whereas everyone that's selling this now seems to do it with two gigabytes. I'm quite sure two gigabytes is plenty, paying £100 extra for those extra six gigabytes. That's a bit over the top. £350 pounds for the two gigabyte version. For a bare NAS, you still need the storage. That's reasonably expensive without being scary. 450, 470 for the eight gig version. Ooh, without, ooh, that's, that's, ooh, you can get a decent hard drive for that price, that memory. That's, that's a lot. So I'm gonna pretend this is a two gigabyte version at 350 pounds, and I'm gonna say, I like it a lot. It does what I want. I'm very glad I got to see a QNAP after so many years. Performance and the way it behaves and the software, all very good. I'm a happy man. Sort out the Chrome thing, please and I'm a convert. This is the Award for Kit Guru. This is the QNAP TS453 Mini, and I'm a happy man.